Hello everyone, Muckluck Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the Fourth here, and this is a guide aimed at showing you how to get started making legendary armor. This guide is targeted toward anyone who doesn't yet know how to obtain it and is interested in doing so. First off, why would you want legendary gear? Legendary gear has the same stats as ascended gear. This means if you have a piece of ascended gear with power, precision, ferocity on it, and a legendary gear with those exact same stats, the numbers will be the same. However, the legendary gear can swap to other stats at any time you are out of combat. This means you can use that armor armor with every gear set you own or aim to own, and it can always have the desired stats. Additionally, when you replace a rune or infusion on a legendary item, the old one pops off instead of getting deleted, which can save a lot of cash and other currencies if you swap builds often. Similar to the legendary weapons in my earlier guide, there is a long list of ingredients, so don't get discouraged. Think of this like a long-term project and do a little bit each day, and you can have a full set over time if you want it. Most of these are actually fairly easy to get compared to their legendary weapon counterparts. There are three ways to get legendary armor, and all three sets look different. Conquest ranked PvP, that's the 5v5 PvP mode if you're unfamiliar, world versus world, and raiding. The legendary armor from raids is pretty flashy and transforms when you enter combat. The armor from PvP and world versus world does not transform, but does have its own appearance. No matter the source, they all share the same convenience of stat changing, etc. Similar to the legendary weapons, there is a wiki page that is very useful for this process we will be referencing. Link will be in the description. PvP. If you are playing ranked PvP, it's very straightforward to get the PvP legendary armor. While playing ranked matches during a ranked season, you will be earning a few types of currencies. Shards of Glory can be gained from ranked or unranked, Ascended Shards of Glory can be gained from ranked play only, and PvP League tickets from ranked only. At most, you can earn 110 PvP League tickets per season. You use only 50 to make a legendary, so you can make two legendaries every season and have a full set, if you're going for the PvP method only, within three seasons. Now the details. You need a Mist Core Fragment that comes from a Glorious Armor Box, which comes from the Glorious Reward Track in PvP. Just turn on this Reward Track and you'll get the Mist Core Fragment long before you finish gathering the other items. Remember Remember, you can use boosters or the bar in your guild hall to speed this process up if you wish. Mystic Clovers, as mentioned in the Legendary Weapon Guide, you can get these from Daily Login Rewards, PvP Reward Tracks, can gain two per day in the Fractal Room, and can craft them with a very expensive Mystic Forge recipe that does not guarantee results. This is an expensive step to rush, I recommend patience with this step, just let them come in from Login Rewards and Reward Tracks for free. You only need 15 per armor piece, unlike the 75 per weapon. Gift of Might and Magic are made with fang skills, claws, bones, blood, venoms, totems, and dust. Farm them or buy them. All of the above items combined gives you Gift of Competitive Prosperity. Gift of Competitive Prowess is made with four things. Record of League Victories costs 30 PvP tickets sold by the Ascended Armor League Vendor. Eldritch Scroll costs 50 Spirit Shards by Mayani next to the Mystic Forge and Lion's Arch. 50 Obsidian Shards? You probably already have these. There are dozens of ways to get these, including the reward tracks you're already doing in PvP. If you somehow find yourself short, check the wiki for more methods that might work for you. There are too many to list here. Cube of Stabilized Dark Energy, made with 75 stabilizing matrices from Fractals, Trading Post, and a few other locations, and a ball of Dark Energy, which is obtained from salvaging an Ascended item. You always get one when you salvage armor or weapons, you only sometimes get one when you salvage anything else. Combine those four to finish the Gift of Competitive Prowess. Competitive Dedication is made with a record of League Participation, costs 20 tickets from the same vendor. Glob of Condensed Spirit Energy costs 100 Spirit Shards, same vendor. Star of Glory costs 400 Ascended Shards of Glory, same vendor. And Jar of Distilled Glory costs 1,000 Shards of Glory, same vendor. Combine them to finish the gift of competitive dedication. The final item is a piece of ascended PvP armor. There are a couple of ways to get this, but short of winning tournaments, the method most of us will use is the same. The first tab of the Ascended Armor League vendor sells the Ascended Armor for a couple of gold, some Shards of Glory, some Ascended Shards of Glory, and Grandmaster Marks. You will have gotten most, if not all of this, while working on the other materials. If you find yourself short on Grandmaster Marks, you can buy the recipe in the Fractal Room with pristine Fractal Relics in World v World with a a few tickets, or here with a few tickets. If you do buy the recipe, I recommend you buy it with pristine fractal relics, as I find those easier to come by, but do what you need to do. Slam it all together in the Mystic Forge, and you got a legendary armor piece. That may sound like a long list, but remember half of that was purchased from one merchant in the PvP room. Once you PvP'd enough to purchase the materials, actually crafting it is the fast part. World v World Legendary Armor. 
While playing World v. World, you will gather a few currencies here unique to World v. World. Proof of heroics, testimonies of heroics, badges of honor, and World v. World skirmish claim tickets. You will also occasionally get skirmish chests where you could choose a reward, and the badges and testimonies are among those. In my experience, the tickets will take the longest. You will need a gift of battle. That's gained from the gift of battle reward track. Very straightforward. Remember to use guild hall bar buff or boosters if you wish to speed this up. Clovers, fangs, scales, claws, bones, blood, venom, totems, and dust are the same as the PvP version. Combine all of the above to make a gift of war prosperity. A legendary war insight, which costs 1,095 tickets, sold by legendary commander War Razor. He's the cat with the backpack clearly compensating for something. An Eldritch Scroll, Obsidian Shards, Cube of Stabilized Dark Energy, same items as mentioned earlier in the PvP version. Those four combined makes gift of war prowess. Certificate of Honor for 500 badges of honor, Glob of Condensed Spirit Energy for 100 Spirit Shards, Certificate of Heroics for 250 Proofs of Heroics or Testimonies of Heroics, and 250 Memories of Battle, though these drop randomly in World v. World. If you don't have enough, they are super cheap on the trading post. Those four combined make the gift of War Dedication. The last item is an Ascended Triumphant piece of armor that we're going to upgrade to Legendary status. Not the exotic one, we need the Ascended piece. The vendor that sells the pieces is the Skirmish Supervisor who stands in the middle of the road pretending like he's not obstructing traffic. To purchase a piece, you have to unlock it. To unlock it, do the Triumphant Armor Reward Track. At the end, you will get to choose a piece to unlock, and you get the exotic version. Then, you can buy the Ascended version from the Merchant with Gold, World v. World Tickets, Memories of Battle, and Grandmaster Marks. You can also use the Mist Forge Triumphant Heroes Armor for this recipe if you want a shinier Legendary set, but it is more expensive, so it will take more farming. Combine the Ascended pieces of Triumphant or Mistforged Triumphant armor with the three gifts you crafted to get the Legendary counterpart. The Legendary armor from Raids is the most well-known. It is flashier as it changes appearance in combat, and it was the first Legendary armor set added to the game, a few months before the PvP and World v. World variants. I saved this for last because there are already some videos on this method as opposed to the first two. However, we've already touched on the first two, so it won't take long to go over this one as well. Here's the list of materials. We've already gone over Mystic Clover's Gift of Condensed Might and Gift of Condensed Magic, but the first item, the Gift of Craftsmanship, is different. This is purchased from Faction Provisioners for 50 Provisioners Tokens. To get a Provisioners Token, you will trade the Provisioner something that they want in exchange for the token. Certain trades are easier than others, such as Globs of Ecto plasm, but they will only do a set amount of trades each day. Once you get 50 tokens, purchase the gift, combine it with the Clover's Might and Magic, and you've got your Gift of Prosperity. Second major item is a Gift of Prowess. You will need 25 Legendary Insights. You get a Legendary Insight from each boss each week. This means that even if you are with a group that is new to raiding, you can start farming the first few bosses each week repeatedly to build up your Insights. The Scroll, Shards, and Cube of Dark Energy we covered earlier. Combine these four, you've got a Gift of Prowess. Gift of Dedication is made with items from Heart of Thorns. Five Auric Ingots crafted from Auric Dust and Slivers. Five Reclaimed Metal Plates salvaged from Reclaimed Weapons or chosen from the Verdant Brink Heroes Choice Chest at the end of the Meta Event. Five Chalk Eggs can drop from Crystallized Supply Caches and Tangled Depths or complete the Chalk Garant Meta to get one guaranteed if you choose it as your reward. Least grindiest way would be to just do the Chalk Garant once per day and build up a collection. Gift of the Pact, purchased from the Whispers Keeper for 250 airship parts, Aurelium, and Leyline Crystals, which are currencies from Verdant Brink, Orc Basin, and Tangled Depths events. Once you have all those items, combine them. Gift of Dedication. The last item you need is a Precursor Armor Piece. However, unlike the PvP and World v. World variations, this is locked behind a couple of achievements. Envoy Armor, Experimental Armor, and Envoy Armor, Refined Armor. The steps for these two collections heavily involve the raid instances themselves. Most of them are not too out of the way if you're already running the raid, but you should read each of the items you need for each instance to make sure you don't miss them. After finishing Envoy Armor Refined Armor, the second achievement, you get a full set, pick heavy, medium, or light, of Ascended Armor. If you later decide to make Legendary Raid Armor for a different armor type, you can visit a Master Craftsman, but only after you've completed the Envoy Armor 2 Refined Armor achievement, to buy the recipes to craft more. In a way, this step is more annoying than its PvP and World v. World counterparts, but because you get a full set of precursors at the end, the chest, gloves, boots, helmets, shoulder pads, and pants, it's certainly nice in the long run. And that's it. 
Enjoy your legendary armor. It is account bound, so for example, if you get legendary medium armor, it could be used on your ranger, engineer, or thief, and it can be moved between your characters and builds as it is needed. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button to see more similar content when it releases and help this charming, self-proclaimed, yet still humble channel grow. If you have any questions or would like to chat, I'm online on Twitch every night after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and happy to help. Lastly, if you have any tips on acquiring legendary armor that a new player might find helpful, please put them in the comments. Happy crafting!